Hey guys, it's Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you today. I got a real special treat for you. I'm introducing this channel here, Postposterous, by a great pal of mine. It goes by Dan. Uh, he owns this channel. And what I'd like you to do is come over here, check him out. Come over here and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. Uh, he has great in-depth tutorials. Uh, he goes into detail on things that I have not covered also. Uh, one other great thing about him is that the things that we do in ASM on my channel, he can show you how to do in Lua. I have come over here and I have watched just about every single one of his vids. And I'm just learning something new each, each time I watch it. And it's just fantastic stuff. So come show that you support the game hacking community. Come over here and subscribe. I also have the links uh, for his channel down in the description as well. His his Patreon. He's got some great perks. Go check it out. You don't wanna you don't wanna miss this. Uh, he is absolutely fantastic, and he has decided to allow CTG members to get a small taste of this channel. He's made for us specifically for you guys uh, a special vid, and he's gonna use Lua, and he's also gonna provide you a Lua template that you can use over and over and over again in any of the games that you hack. So we really appreciate that, Postposterous. So go ahead and take it away, pal. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. Stick around. Guess who's back? Back again. What's up, guys, and welcome back. As you saw in the intro, today we'll be manipulating bytes to make it so when Link shoots an arrow, instead of subtracting arrows, it will add them. This is something that's been on my gamer bucket list of things I wanted to learn to do since way back in my T-Search days. So a few years ago I learned how it's done, and now I'm going to teach you. Okay, the first thing we'll do is to hit Ctrl Alt A to bring up the auto assemble window. Now I'll paste in a handy little Lua template that will help us find and manipulate the bytes we need. I'll explain what to change in just a bit, but for now, we'll just click Assign to Current Cheat Table. This will add the script into our list below. Now we can just close this window. The game we're playing is being run in a Wii U emulator called Simu, but the method should apply to any game depending on the structure. Now we'll load the Simu process into Cheat Engine. Alright, we're ready for step 1, finding the arrow address. Since the game I'm playing is being run in an emulator, you'll notice I've got some different value types than you might have seen. This is because most modern emulators use Big Indian value type. If you'd like to get into making cheat tables for emulators, I've got another video where I walk you through how to add Big Indian value type. You'll need it to find any value larger than a single byte, which is 0 to 255. Now we'll take note of how many arrows we're starting with and shoot one. Now in Cheat Engine, we'll do an exact value scan for our arrows. Next, we'll shoot another arrow and search again for the new value. We'll do this a few times until we have only a few values in the list. Now we'll add one of our returned addresses to the list and change the value to see if it affects our arrows. Looks like we found it. Now that we have our arrow address, we need to find out where it's getting its value from. To do that, we'll right click the address and select find out what writes to this address. You'll see a confirmation message. Just click OK. Now Cheat Engine is watching and waiting for a value to be written to our arrow address so it can trace it back and show us where it came from. So now we'll just need to shoot one more arrow to trigger it. There we go. Now we'll click show disassembler. That brings us to the instruction responsible for updating our arrow value every time we shoot one. We could just right click it and choose to NOP the instruction, NOP, that means instead of updating the value it will do nothing. But we want to see if we can make it add arrows instead of subtracting them. To do that, we'll continue up the structure and see if anything looks like it may be responsible for subtracting. Alright, this looks interesting. It says SUB, which is short for subtract. These are the bytes that represent this subtract instruction. Now we'll double click it and see what happens if we change it to add. Alright, I think we've done something here. Looks like it's adding and not subtracting, cool. 
Now we'll just want to note down the bytes that changed when we changed the instruction into an add. We'll need these for our script. Now we'll change the instruction back into a sub since that's how it will exist when we're searching for it. Now select and copy an array of bytes. Our goal here is to find an array of bytes that's unique, meaning this specific set of bytes doesn't exist anywhere else in the game's memory. This will help our script locate the subtraction instruction so we can change it. Ideally, we want the least amount of unique bytes possible. We'll randomly select a set starting with our subtraction instruction. Then, we'll right click and select copy bytes only. Now we'll perform a new array of bytes scan for the bytes we just copied. We're hoping we get only a single return. Success. But I want to see if I can still get a single return with even less bytes. Less bytes means the script will run faster and improves the likelihood this set of bytes will exist the next time we run the game. Okay, I think this will work. Now we've got what we need to get our script up and running. Here is where we'll enter our bytes. This section of the script performs a scan for these bytes. Here we need to enter how many bytes are in the instruction we want to modify. In our case, it's three. Finally, we'll modify this section to match the bytes we want to change it to. Now we'll just click OK and test our new script. Let's give our script a name. All right, let's try running it. If it worked, we should see this instruction change from a sub to an add. Sweet, looks like it worked. Now we'll just verify by shooting a few arrows. Success. Now every time we shoot an arrow, it will add an arrow. One other cool thing I'd like to point out about this script is it's very forgiving for non-unique bytes. By that I mean, it will apply this byte change to any addresses that match. I've found that for two or three returns, it usually works great with no issues. Where you can run into problems is when you get several return addresses. It will try to make this byte change to all of them, and chances are one of the addresses will cause a crash. So, first choice is to find a unique AOB, but in the event you just can't, the script has your back. Thanks for watching, guys. Later.